My name is Yvette. I work in the adult programs department along with Joanna, who's with us today. And we're very thankful to have all of you here for a special visit of a return guest who's one of our favorites, Olga Vinegar. Uh, before, of course, I'd like to thank, as always, the friends of the Rogers Memorial Library who are responsible for sponsoring all of our uh, music events. So we really appreciate their help and their generosity because we wouldn't be able to do them without their help. And thank you to all of you who are members of the Friends as well that help support it. So thank you very much. This is our last classical concert until September. So thank all of you for being here with us over the winter. It was a tricky one. And uh, we thank you for being able to come and be with us. We do have some concerts lined up for the summer on Thursday evenings as we've done in the past. So stay tuned and look for those. There, sh there should be some fun ones. So now I'd like to uh, turn our attention to Olga Vinokur, who will be joined later by her son, Dan Nip, who some of you have watched over the years as he's grown. He's, he's played for us a few times before. Please welcome Olga Vinokur. Uh, it's great to be back uh, in your wonderful library and uh, you know I'm very excited to play for you a very special program and of course I'm very excited to bring back my son who actually became taller than me. I don't know if any of you remember our debut here when he was a little kid so it's very exciting for me today. Uh, my first, the first half of my program will be dedicated to a genre called Etude. Um, if anybody doesn't know what attitude means, it means a study or exercise. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to play for you a bunch of exercise. Uh, actually, on the contrary, I would like to show how this genre evolved uh, during the time. And it was quite a common practice in the end of the 18th century to write those sets of attitudes, especially one uh, who is more known for it was Carl Cherney, who wrote books of attitudes for his students students so they will improve their technique. They were very useful, but not as exciting maybe musically and not as beautiful so you can use them for the concert program. However, in the 19th century, such a genius composer, Polish composer as uh, Frédéric Chopin, he takes the genre to a different level and he writes a book of 24 etudes. They're bringing new challenge, technical challenges but also, the most important, they become so beautiful and so expressive and um, musical that it becomes a um, you know um, treasure of piano repertoire and very, very popular uh, in programming. So I will play for you a couple of Chopin etudes. Thank you. 
another composer uh, from the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, Alexander Scriabin. Um, he was a romantic uh, composer, even though going into the mo mo modern uh, era, and he absolutely adored Frédéric Chopin. When he was young, he was so much influenced by uh, Chopin, uh, and especially in his early ages, he wrote pieces which are also very romantic, very poetic. However, you can hear his own very uh, distinctive language, especially early in his years. So he also writes a set of uh, etudes, and his early etudes are also 24, and he borrows from Chopin the same patterns in the key arrangement and the structure. Uh, so, however, later on you can see already much different characteristic of his language. Uh, so I will play for you his two etudes. Thank you. 
Uh, another great uh, composer and one of the greatest virtuosos of all time, um, so Gerachmaninovovic, -Gerach approximately the same time with uh, Alexander Skriabin. Um, he was such a tremendous virtuoso, I think one of the greatest pianists I think ever lived. And of course, he uses this genre, but this time he takes it to a different level, and he writes two books of etudes tableau, which means pictures at it. Each one has some kind of, uh, I believe, story or picture or image that I'm sure Rachmaninoff had in his mind. However, he decided not to give the names to those pieces. I think maybe just to uh, leave some space for your own imagination. So I will play for you two of those etudes tableau. Thank you. 
another great virtuoso of all times was a composer who lived in the 19th century great romantic, um, Franz Liszt. And of course, because he was such a tremendous virtuoso, he couldn't not use this genre and take that technical, technically challenging genre to a gain different level. He writes set of 12 transcendental etudes. Uh, they were, they are, I think, one of the most difficult pieces ever written. Uh, and even though when his friend, uh, who was a very good established pianist, took it to just to cite it, he went back to him and uh, he said, Franz, it's impossible to play them. They are too difficult. You have to write them. Uh, actually, Franz at least did uh, three versions of this set. However, they didn't become any easier. They are very challenging, but very, very beautiful and expressive, and they're true masterpieces that he wrote. I will play for you number 10.
Thank you very much. Well, um, uh, going into the 20th century and 21st century, this genre is still quite popular. And uh, many composers, of course, I couldn't include all the composers that wrote uh, etudes, but I would like to um, introduce you a great work by um, wonderful American pianist and composer Earl Wilde. And again, he uses the genre uh, by arranging Gershwin songs. He writes a set of seven virtuoso etudes. And uh, again, why he, why he writes seven virtuoso etudes, not just song by Gershwin, I think because he takes those songs in, um, by Gershwin and just makes really virtuosic, beautiful arrangement of, uh, of them. So you do recognize the songs, but it's beautifully and quite virtuosically arranged by Earl Wilde.
and I will just play for you two more uh, pieces by or what. this treasure, this beautiful, beautiful piece that we published after his death, Fantasy Impromptu. Please welcome Dan.
will continue the program uh, with a with a, uh, with, uh, with a piece uh, by Ukrainian composer. We would like to uh, uh, tribute to Ukraine and Ukrainian people, and this is a wonderful piece as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy.
Thank you. 